All right, welcome to another episode on the Afrocentrist podcast, and especially this segment, The Woman, Her Story, Her Impact, where I get to speak to women from all across the world, or from everywhere, all the part of the world, sharing their stories and how they are currently impacting their world. And today on the show, I have this beautiful lady all the way from Wari, and she is a diction coach. I can't wait for you to hear her speak and to let her share her story with us, how she got to choose this path to be a diction coach, impacting our world, helping other people speak confidently, and just, you know, impacting a lot of people. Like, you hear her story, right? I mean, she's one person that I admire a lot. She's an executionist, if I can put it like that, because we belong in the same coaching community and I see her flying high because her execution game is like more than 55% when mine is like 70. (laughs) She's so great at what she does and I can't wait for you to meet her today. Today on the show, I have with me Ketura Oyibo, who is a diction and public speaking coach. She's passionate about educating individuals, schools, and organizations to speak eloquently and present themselves as confident, polished, and refined speakers. This, in turn, helps them to achieve their goals, that's their career goals. She is the author of A Guide to Better Pronunciation in Seven Easy Steps, Speak for Impact, Influence, and Income, Master the Art of Public Speaking, and Effective Presentation Skills, and reading made easy, rules and codes to reading. She trains, coaches, and empowers individuals and aspiring diction coaches to begin their speech journey. She works with front desk personnel and customer care representatives to speak with confidence, thus establishing cordial customer care relationships. She also works with personal and business brands, educators, school owners, and corporate organizations to attract and retain customers through their communication skills. She is a certified diction coach and the secretary of the Association of Diction Coaches of Nigeria, ADCN, Delta State Chapter. She has structures that enable her to dish out content about her personal and business brand. She has a thriving Facebook community of over 11,000 members. Diction and public speaking network with K, that is what the community is called. And the level at which or the rate or the duration at which she grew this membership, this woman is on fire. And she organizes free trainings for educators and school owners via webinar on her Facebook and WhatsApp groups. So today, again, I'm speaking to Ketura Oyibo. She is a diction and communication coach. And today we're going to hear her story. Why this path? Why did she choose this? Don't go anywhere. This is where you grab your cup of tea, your cup of coffee, or your bottle of water, if that is what works for you, as we get to meet Ketura up close and personal. And I'll be right back with my guest. I am a woman phenomenally phenomenal woman that's me maya angelo welcome to this segment of the afrocentris podcast the woman her story and her impact where i get to speak to women from across the globe sharing their stories and how they are impacting their world coming to you every wednesday 4 p.m gst of course with your favorite show host the energetic ej so make it a date with me every wednesday the Afrocentrist Podcast, proudly African. Hello, Ketura, how are you? Good. <laughs> how are you, EJ? How awesome you? stuff. I am great. I am awesome. <laughs> I am energetic as always. Good to have you on the show. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Awesome. So, Ketura, I have introduced you. We know you're a diction coach. We know you can speak French, French. So, <laughs> we are waiting to hear all about your story, how you got here, why you decided to choose this path, and how you are impacting your world with it. Because I know, I mean, the rate at which you grow your community. I mean, when I, I think the first time I heard about you was at maybe like 
1,000 or 2,000. And in the space of like three months, you went to 11,000. My God, that is impact. Like, so we want to hear all about that. But before we go into all that serious stuff, let's have a trivia question for you. Okay. What is one of the most embarrassing moments you have felt you, you have experienced in, on this, your journey of being addiction coach? Okay. That was when I actually started. In fact, I will tie it into what you said about Spring Street. When I started, because before I began my speech journey, I had always spoken flatly. People knew me for the way I used to speak. So when I started, for many, it was as if I was forming. Some would say, please go. You're pretending. You're acting to be someone you're not. Some would even say you were speaking spring free and all of those for some they felt intimidated and um, the best way they could bring me to their level was to get to discourage me i must say it was discouraging that was from individuals who i already had relationship with before i began my journey then another scenario was when i went to the market so I went to go get the vegetables I needed for salad. Mm -hmm. I approached the woman and I told her I needed to get some cucumbers. It said she had a very rough day and she got so offended and she was, in fact, she said, please, if you're not interested in buying, please go. It was really embarrassing. And I've come to note that what really matters is communication. Though then I was just starting so. I always would want to speak right. But as it is, communication is so depending on my audience, depending on those I am communicating with, it determines the tone of the diction I use in speaking to them. Interesting stuff. I can imagine like the woman vexed. What do you mean? Do you want to buy cucumber? Do you want to buy cucumber? What is that? <laughs> Cucumber, not cucumber. <laughs> I can only imagine. I can only imagine the anger because you, on the other hand, will be wondering, like, I don't understand. He passed this English where I speak. <laughs> what I do? What I do now? <laughs> Oh my God. Let me start from there. Especially when you said that people who, people who knew you before, you know, um, started to feel like you are faking it. Like, but in, in reality, you were on a journey because this was the path that you've chosen for yourself. How did you combat it? I mean, you're going to weave your stories into these questions or into these answers. But like, I just wanted to take it off from there because I can only imagine, like, I feel like the first, the, if, if I had also like met you then, I would have, what is wrong? Why are you trying to, why are you trying to overdo? Do you understand? But it was a journey you were on and you were intentional about it. How did you handle those early stages when you felt like, oh, am I really being um, a different person? Like, am I really pretending to be what I am not? How did you handle it? I must say it wasn't easy, but some, something stood out for me. It was my goal, my whys. In fact, I prefer to call it whys. When I think about my whys, my reasons for embarking on this journey, it kept me on back there. So I told myself, what do I stand to achieve by speaking right? One, doors of opportunities will be opened to me. And of course, doors of opportunities have been opened for me as a result of speaking right. There are cases, there are situations, I work into certain establishments and all I need to do is wear a warm smile, speak in the right direction. And from this part of the world, the average human would speak flatly. So when you speak right, you tend to capture the interest, the attention of your listeners. You may not be dressed so nicely. You may not be dressed so expensively. But by simply speaking the way you do, you get heads turning around, wanting to see 
who is speaking, who has that voice, who is communicating, and they want to listen to you. So that was my goal, to get to make an impact, to get better opportunities opened to me. And so when there were situations, when people laughed at me then, gave me facial expressions and all of those, I remember my whys, and that kept me going. In fact, during my coaching sessions, before I start, I do not just begin. First day of my coaching sessions with clients, we do not begin to learn how to speak right. No. We have our vision, our goals. I tell them, write down your reasons, your whys for registering for this program. Because a time will come when they get discouraged. Most times, many would come to me and they'll tell me, Coach K, I am so not doing this again. I am tired. I just cannot go on with the facial expressions and all of those, the names people are calling me. And then I tell them, go back to your reasons. They write it down, not just typing it. No, it is written in a notebook, in a notepad. And so when they reflect on their whys, this keeps them going. So for me, in a summary, my goals helped me to keep going back then. Wow. I love it. Makes a lot of sense because if you know your why, eh, you would not be bothered about the, 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 the distractions on the road. Like even if they laugh at you, you are the one who knows your destination. You know where you're going. And so you're not bothered by what they say. And I think that's a very, very strong lesson right there. Now let us go back to the beginning. How did you get to choose this path that you are on? Tell us your story. Okay. I used to be the very timid type. I read English while in school. And by virtue of reading English, Everyone just assumes you are good at public speaking. You are good at communicating. I, where I used to work, whenever we were to have a meeting, whenever one needed to draft something, when it has to do with anything written, spoken, you are called upon. Everyone just assumes that by virtue of studying English, you should be good in those areas. They don't care how you do it. And I was always being shoved to be in other fronts. And there were times I would be asked to act as MC, as master of ceremonies for events. And I would give a thousand and one reasons why I wouldn't want to do so. I remember <laughs> there was a day I feigned being sick. I pretended to be sick, just not to go to work on that day. I've been called upon, I was told, Weeks before then that I was going to act as the MC. On that day, I developed cold feet. I just couldn't do it. And in few cases where I would even master the courage to do so, I would only be an assistant. It was that bad. Then during meetings, I would be asked to read the minutes of meetings. You needed to have seen me. The room will be well ventilated, but I'll become so sweaty. I'll be shaking. You would see me reading the minutes of meeting. You see my hands shaking. It was that bad. And then I told myself, I just couldn't continue that way. I needed to come out of my shell. People who see me speaking today, they ask so many questions. How did you do it? I had to go register for a detailed coaching program on diction and public speaking. And it has helped me a great deal. So I have come from a place of being timid, from a place of being shy, to a place of being able to confidently express myself. It's been a beautiful journey. I am loving this. I'm <laughs> I feel like at this point, some, somebody watching this will just be like fighting in their minds right now. Like, seriously, are you telling me that this is how you speak now? Like every time we come in contact with Keturah, this is how you speak. What would be your answer to that person asking that question in their heads right as they watch you? My answer is a big no. It isn't. I mentioned earlier that communication is what matters. I will relate yet another example, an experience. 
there was a day I was to go out, my car got bad. So I had to find myself to where I was going using public means of transportation, what is uh, called um, commonly known as tricycle, oxyric shop. And so I was going to an estate. I told the man, so and so estate, not estate. The very first one, it did her, it drove past. The second just demonstrated and he drove past. The third came, guess what I did? <laughs> I said, I am going to so and so estate. He said, get in. I got in. And that was how I got to where I was going. There and then I told myself, it doesn't really make sense. You're speaking so well. And at the end of the day, communication doesn't take place. At the end of the day, it's communication that matters. I wouldn't speak to my grandmother, for example. Even my grandmother, she's able to understand me. But let's talk about the average old woman. I wouldn't speak to such one and I'll go speaking. Even my grandmother, let's bring this home. I won't take it top notch because if I do, she wouldn't understand me. So for my grandmother, I would go to her level. If it even requires speaking pigeon, I will. However, I always tell my coaching clients one thing. As a beginner, when you are starting, do not switch. Do not switch. Because if you do, some languages are flat. And to speak in the right English diction, you take your rises, you take your falls. So when you switch, trying to switch back to English diction, trying to switch back to speaking in English diction, it becomes a challenge. So when you're learning, like I did in my case, I would always speak right of it. But for now, my answer to that question is no. My audience, those I am speaking with, determine how I speak. That, that's, that's really amazing because like you said, it's about communication. But then knowing that when it comes to the space of diction, this is, this is what you do. This is how you help people. And it's good to speak right, but it is more important to communicate than speaking right. So when the situation warrants it, speak right, uh, communicate rather than uh, prioritize communication over speaking right. And I love that because I feel this is, so for somebody like me who have, at least I've stayed in three countries now, my home country, at some point I was in Ghana and now I'm in Dubai. It's the fact that I've come to see or observe or, you know, just it's now a thing that I've observed and noticed that when you are in a place, the reason it feels like, oh, somebody traveled to, somebody traveled out. And the next thing you know, they're trying to change, they're trying to speak a certain way. It's not because they just want to pretend to speak that way. It is because for the people in that area, in the country or in the geographical location that they are in, for them to be able to communicate, they have to sound like them. That was so, so, so palpable for me when I was in Ghana. So when you're speaking in Ghana, you're speaking like, ah, uh, ah, uh, what are you saying? But when you speak like them, when you try to sound like them, it's, it's easier for them to pick what you're trying to say, right? They would laugh at you when you say, oh, please come. Like, what is come? Come. When you say, give it to her. Let's say, give it to her. What's her? Her, right? So we, we had to start speaking to sound like them, to be able to. And even right now, I'm doing the same thing because you are speaking right. I am conscious of that. And I'm trying to match your level of diction. It's just beautiful. But the important message that I take away from your story and from what you just shared now is the fact that when it comes to the, uh, when you are learning, don't switch. But when you become a master at diction, prioritize communication over speaking right. And that is why a diction coach like you would rather be dynamic in the way that you communicate making it that it depends on the kind of people that you're speaking to per time that determines how you sound per time. And I just love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So what would you say to somebody who 
you know, listens to you and like, wow, I wish that I could speak right. Like, I don't know how to. At this point, I would like to learn how, what would be the first steps for this person to take? Good. Indicating the interests goes a long way. The interest first, because it's a journey. It's not something you can accomplish in a day or two. It is a journey. For you to master it, it will take several months for an individual to master it. So having the interest, then two, implementation. When you register for a coaching program, you were taught what is needed for you to speak right. It's like you're learning a new language. For some people, they've spoken flatly for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, or even more. So trying or learning to speak right becomes a challenge. But when one implements, when one is intentional, when one is conscious, he or she is able to implement. There is an example I always give to my clients. When you learn how to speak right without implementing, it's like buying a bucket of paint. You get it and you place it somewhere in your house. It's of no use. One wouldn't see it. You just bring it in and you place it somewhere in your house. One wouldn't see the beauty of that paint until it is applied on a surface. That's when the beauty is seen. Similarly, learning without implementing, it's of no use. So having the interest, implementing, and being intentional, those three things would make one to speak right. I love it. Show interest, uh, be intentional, and implement. Like, what's the point? If you really want to speak well, you speak well by speaking. You become a better speaker by speaking. You become a better writer by writing, right? So that is so beautiful. So tell us, I, I'm sure that you have a program or how can people start to work with you if they wanted to? How can they enroll for your diction program or be a part of your community to start to learn from you? I've got a Facebook community. It's... Um, Diction and Public Speaking Network with K. So for any who wishes to join, simply go to Facebook, type Diction and Public Speaking Network with K, and your request will be granted. To register for a Diction and Public Speaking Coaching Program, you can decide to go for a one-to-one -one coaching program or a group Diction Coaching Program. So whichever, for the group coaching program, Anyone who registers for it gets to join others, though it has it is a group coaching program. It has a touch of one-to-one -to, -one to it because we go live, I get to listen to you, I get to give tasks during and after each of the coaching sessions. So those tasks which are given after each session are sent to me directly. That way I get to listen to one speech because the speech challenges client A faces is often not the same with the speech challenges client B faces. So I get to attend to each of my clients' unique speech challenges. But some would say, no, I wouldn't want to be in a group with others. It is fine. And I wouldn't want a situation my classes are programmed. I want something unique to me. I want something that is structured to my own schedule. Good and fine. We get to make arrangements for that. So it's just you and I, one-to-one. -one. So whichever of the packages, group or one-to-one -one coaching program, both are available. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. It's been a pleasure having you on the show today. I feel like I'm speaking well already. <laughs> this is so interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you for not allowing all the embarrassment stop you from achieving your goals and now helping other people achieve theirs because this is so important. And this is a lesson that I want anybody watching this right now or listening to this right now to take away from here. Know your why, 
know your destination and cut out other distractions. It's not going to be easy. It will be embarrassing sometimes. It will be discouraging sometimes. But when you go back to that, why? Why did you start in the first place? When you remember that, you're fired up again to keep going and do not stop until you get to your final destination, until you are that force to reckon with on that path that you have chosen for yourself. It's been an amazing time sharing the screen with you today, Ketura. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for being an amazing person. So guys, I'm going to leave the link to the group, to the Facebook group. If you want to be a part of that, she gives out content. She's like, she's a content queen at the same time. And her community keeps growing in leaps and bounds. I kid you not. How she does it? Well, she executes. She's an implementer. <laughs> That's how she does it, right? And she's going to be able to coach you to implement on you speaking right and speaking in the right diction of your language, especially of English language, all right? So if you want to be a part of that community, you're going to click on the link in the comment, um, in the description of this video and of the audio podcast when it comes out, okay? So be a part of that. Go learn, go implement, know your why, and just speak right, okay? Thank you so much, Ketura, for being here. God bless you. I really, really appreciate you. God bless you. All right, guys, till I come your way again with yet another woman, sharing her story and how she's impacting our world. This is the Energetic EJ saying, have a fantastic day. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please, please hit on the subscribe button, turn on the notification so that you are alerted every time we put out a new content. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.